Welcome to Follow My Crypto Investments. In this introductory lecture, I want to talk about why I think crypto is a good investment now. Why crypto now? And the first reason is, is a fairly obvious reason, uh, but it's more, I think it's more profound than a lot of people think. So here I have a chart of the NASDAQ, or the NASDAQ 100, and you can see we had a big, uh, big peak back in 2000. And then we had a giant crash in 2000 and 2002. And the NASDAQ never surpassed that peak, never got back up to that peak until, uh, call it 2016, uh, 2017. And so this was, a, this was basically a 17 year period where the NASDAQ went nowhere. Now Bitcoin had a similar crash after its huge run up in 2017 and the years before. We can see here that it peaked at the end of, uh, at the end of 2017 basically sold off all of 2018 and now has been showing some uh, some signs of life and if these are uh, this is a chart of Bitcoin versus the US dollars so Bitcoin priced in US dollars and you can see here uh, monthly bars and you can see if we if we ignore this this sort of little bubble we had at the end of 2000 uh, 2017 you can see that Bitcoin is basically uh, trading at or close to new all-time highs and this is quite extraordinary to have a recovery like this. And what this tells me is that Bitcoin is not dead. The whole crypto space is not dead. In fact, it's very much alive. And one thing to understand about crypto that's very interesting, especially Bitcoin in particular, is the higher the price of the Bitcoin, the more attention it gets and the more valuable the whole franchise, the whole platform becomes. So there's a lot of what George Soros would call reflexivity here, where the higher Bitcoin goes in price, the more valuable it becomes. So this is sort of a fundamental price uh, price indicator here. Then we have a, a bunch of other a bunch of other reasons. So for example, we have Facebook getting into Libra, starting their own cryptocurrency. They may or may not be able to launch this, but what this tells us is that uh, someone like Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg thinks that crypto is a, is a very important space to be in. Now, Facebook is a multi, multi-billion dollar, hundreds of billions of dollar uh, company. They could really be allocating their new investments anywhere. And so we at least know that Mark Zuckerberg thinks this is an important enough space, crypto is an important enough space that it's worth, that it can really move the needle for a, a multi, a mega cap company like Facebook. So we've got some smart people on the side of this, as well as many, many very smart uh, venture capitalists obviously in Silicon Valley, who are still funding uh, crypto startups. So this would be the second reason. First reason would be the, f the price action. Second reason would be a lot of smart people are bullish on, on crypto. And as part of that, we're beginning to see big institutions, uh, endowments, uh, hedge funds begin to, uh, uh, pensions as well, and obviously, you know, mutual funds and uh, hedge funds as well, beginning to buy Bitcoin, beginning to buy uh, various cryptos. They've been doing their due diligence for a few years. They're finally ready to pull the trigger. And the fact that uh, the crypto is trading, that Bitcoin, for example, is trading near these highs will add a bit of urgency to the situation for them as they allocate. So this is very nice. We've got big investors beginning to come into the space. It's still a very small space. Uh, we're still very early movers. And so it's nice to be in a space where you've got these sort of tailwinds uh, and you know that there's going to be big money buying the dips. And that's what I believe, uh, believe is the case in the whole crypto space, not just, not just Bitcoin. And then most, uh, most recently, I think the most interesting thing that has really pushed me to start this in the last, uh, in the last week or so is just the gigantic uh, plummeting of treasury note yields. Uh, basically, interest rates falling all around the globe, especially in the U.S. over the last few weeks, as it becomes increasingly clear that the Fed is going to have to cut rates again, and the fact that they're also very open to printing money. Now, printing money, also known as quantitative easing, when the Fed cuts rates and prints money, uh, zero yield assets do very well. These are assets that don't pay any yield. So gold, for example, you can see how gold has been performing uh, over the past few weeks, breaking out to new highs uh, today in early August uh, 2019 as I'm recording this. Now, one reason zero yield assets do well in, in uh, money printing environments or falling interest rate environments is if you have some cash and you can put in a savings account, make two, two and a half percent or a high yield savings account, you know, that's decent in this, in this very modern or postmodern world. 
Uh, and so you may choose to do that. But when rates start going down, especially short rates, the savings rates that you're going to be getting in your savings account will be going down. And zero yield assets don't look quite as, um, uh, quite as bad. So if I'm in gold, I'm not getting paid any interest. But if I'm in, you know, if cash is only paying uh, 1% or 0%, and what's really happening as, as interest rates fall all across the curve, you can see the five-year five year note plummeting, the two-year note plummeting. Fed funds looks like they're going to have to cut again after cutting in July. So this really favors, uh, it favors uh, zero-yield assets, as we said, like gold. And I really think that gold is uh, um, gold will not be the only beneficiary. And I think if you're a millennial or you're sort of a more modern generation, Gen X, uh, Gen Y, or Gen Z, you may not be interested in gold. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of storage costs associated with gold. If you actually buy gold, you have to store it and move it and insure it or pay someone to do that. And uh, they're just they're they're problems they're problems with gold, including transport. For example, if you have to leave the country you're in, it's very hard to move uh, large amounts large amounts of gold and not have people notice. Then there's the whole problem of how much gold is actually in the earth. If someone were to find a lot of gold. Uh, all of a sudden, the, the whole the whole uh, supply could be could be devalued by having having much more supply. So gold is problematic, but what I would suggest is that digital gold is really what the coming generations are going to be interested in, and it's certainly what I'm more interested in. Crypto, Bitcoin in particular. You can see Bitcoin has a very similar chart here to gold, uh, trading near near all time new highs. Uh, we're in a nice uptrend. We've got the 50 day moving average here above the 200 day moving average. These are these are daily bars price trading above uh, the 50-day moving average. And so I think this is, this is an extended trend. You know, it's being pushed by, by, by falling interest rates and the, the specter of more money printing. And then finally, the, the, the last thing that really uh, pushes this over the edge, I would say, is the, uh, the currency devaluation that we saw China do on Monday. And what really got my attention was this, treep, this tweet by uh, Trump where he's calling out China for for devaluing their currency. And there's been a, a lot of speculation, and I think it's correct speculation, that we're entering a period here of competitive devaluations. And you have, you have um, various people on the ex, uh, old vice chairman of the Fed, I think this was uh, Alan Blinder, Alan Blinder, saying he wouldn't be surprised if Trump does a surprise devaluation of the US dollar. And so what you can have here is a situation where different countries are, in order to have a trade advantage, are devaluing their dollar. Now this is this is crazy behavior, but it's rational to a certain extent. If everyone's doing it, uh, it makes a certain amount of sense to help your uh, to help your exporters. But it's obviously very bad for people who are holding the currency. If you hold a thousand U.S. dollars and and Trump or someone else devalues it, uh, your your purchasing power for those for those dollar dollars goes down. And uh, your Big Mac and your Coke just got more expensive. Everything, everything gets more expensive. And it can be, so it can be very bad, obviously. And so I think there's a very good chance that uh, whether the U.S. actually devalues the dollar, whether Trump does it as a, a surprise move, as a retaliatory move against China, I think it's, I think it's quite possible. But the general global uh, backdrop here is negative interest rates in Europe, in Switzerland, for example, all the government securities have negative yields at this point. The entire yield curve is below zero. Interest rates falling. And then this threat of competitive currency devaluations going all around uh, going all around the globe. And in an environment, and we're seeing this show up in the price action, obviously. So we have Bitcoin and, as we said, gold. These sort of uh, fixed, uh, fixed supply assets or scarce assets, hard assets, or hard digital assets do well in this kind of backdrop. And that's why in this environment, I think assets uh, like crypto and Bitcoin will do very well. And it's, it's certainly borne out on the chart. Uh, in fact, I believe that, that Bitcoin, um, I think it has a very good chance of reaching uh, $100,000 of Bitcoin by the end of 2021. So just, uh, just a little over two years from now. And if Bitcoin survives, and I think there's a very good chance it survives, I believe in 10 years from now, you can see you would, you, it will be possible for one Bitcoin to be trading at a million dollars. Currently trading a little north of, uh, call it $11,695. So this is a very nice way. There are very few investments where you can make 10x on your money uh, or 100 or more x on your money. And some of the other cryptos have a lot more upside even than this. 
So that's why I'm bullish on crypto now. That's why I'm going to be opening up this new account so people can follow around and we can all learn together. One last thing I should remember, I should, uh, I should emphasize before we go, we talked a little bit about gold and zero yield assets working well in an environment like this. And we talked about the problem with gold supply. There can always be more supply coming on. Uh, the nice thing about crypto and Bitcoin in particular is that there are a fixed number of Bitcoins in circulation. There are only 21 million Bitcoins that can ever be minted. And out of that, the speculation is that roughly uh, 4 million, at least 4 million Bitcoins have been lost or somehow locked up. So there's a very fixed supply for this. It's a scarce asset. And as a lot of money comes in here to chase it, institutional money, uh, the price will really benefit from these, from these tailwinds and can go up quite a bit. And we'll talk a little bit more why I think it can go, it can go to $100,000 or beyond. But I think this is one of the best places to be in this current environment, especially when we see uh, a lot of uh, you know, uh, momentum stocks losing their, losing their uh, glimmer. And we've had just a terrible earnings season. So I think the momentum stock trade may be, may be going away here. Here's a chart of uh, iRobot just, as, just an, as an example. But we've had a bad earnings season. Amazon uh, plummeting since earnings, gapping down on earnings and continuing to go down. And I think crypto is a very interesting place. It's one of the, the, the places where I'll be allocating money. And in the next, uh, next lecture, I'm going to show you my, uh, my account and which brokers that I'm using so you can follow along. Again, this is a risky asset. It's not for everyone. You should only use risk capital to trade it. Uh, but I think there's quite a bit of potential here, especially if one can be patient, accumulate these various cryptos and put them away. I think one can make a lot of money in this space. So I'll see you in the next lecture where we'll talk about the different uh, crypto brokers that I like that will enable you to actually uh, trade crypto.